Oh, are we good? Yes. Well, then welcome. To what? To another episode, honey. Of? Of seeing our new logo driving to the res. Our logo is magnificent. Yes. Who Thank made you. it? Inanna. Inanna did it, yes. Yes, Anna McCarty. <laughs> Yes, she's she a rest girl. Job. So our favorite hosts are Larry yes. and Elio. Oh, I forgot about that part. Should we do it again? Welcome, Welcome to, to another, another episode of, of Driving, Driving to the Reds with your, your favorite, favorite hosts, Larry, Larry and Inelia. All right. All righty then. Okay then. So what we're talking about today, babe? Well, we were... Probably anyone who's listening to this probably already notices our nice new logo, which I thought was smashing. It is amazing. I really like how there's so much hidden in it. Yes. Because it's kind of like our podcast, right? Driving to the Res. Mm -hmm. You yes. don't think what we're going to talk about is the things we talk about. <laughs> right. And the same with our logos. When you look at the here and here and here, oh my gosh, you keep finding stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. really spectacular. Yeah. She did a good, good job. Amazing job. Fabulous. Fantastic. I was thinking also before we started about our afternoon. Okay. So I don't know. You might, might remember last week uh, Todd was out here and we spent the whole week or it might have been the week before, honestly. Uh, three weeks ago, I think. Maybe four. Not that far. Somewhere in between there. Yes. And we did a lot of expeditioning and running around and checking out this, checking out that. And um, practicing our animal communications, our our experiential telepathy, mm -hmm. processing fear after dark walking in the woods. Yes, Things like indeed. that. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> since Todd left, things kind of quieted down a little bit, but then not. I don't know if they quieted down at all. I think... actually. So we paid attention might have turned down a little bit. Yes, I think that's what usually happens. That uh, you know, right? When he's here, of... you're like every day. Let's go to woods. Let's yes, go to woods. Let's exactly. go to woods. Let's go to woods. Is there anybody here? Let's connect. Yes. Where should we go? Yeah. Where are you guys at? Where do you want to meet? Yeah. What do you want to talk about? And he's what do you really show good me? at facilitating that. Oh man, he's he so knocks. Good. He's yeah, never stops. Yep. He knocks it out of the field. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's called, right? Out of the park. Out of the park. Okay, not the field. Right. Good enough, though. Knocks it out of the park. Out of the park. Yeah. Right. And so I like I like to make note, you know, we did uh, collaborate a little bit on a project. It's called uh, an experiential telepathy class. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, practice it, get it yourself. It supports his work. It supports ours work. And mm -hmm. it uh, teaches you the skills you need to know and some of the, you know, misconceptions even. It's good, uh, a good intro if you haven't taken it mm -hmm. to the whole idea of communicating with. Um, it takes out all the difficulty out of telepathy. Right. Because the way we've been taught about telepathy is very disempowering, uh, filled with false information, in my opinion. And this method is the natural telepathy that we actually have as human beings, but also that all the animals that I've known and plants also and all sorts of creatures have. So you develop the skill, and actually, by the time this comes out, we would already have done, I think, our animal communication class. Right, I'm sure of it because it's only in a day or so. Yeah. Oh, that's right, yes. <laughs> and this yeah. comes out in a couple of weeks. So, um, And that goes into great depth about how to use that skill within the environment of animals and plants and other creatures and ultra-dimensional creatures too, so... So mm -hmm. check it out, find it. Yeah. If you don't know how, I'm sure there'll be a link there'll be in a our link. notes. Yes. Or Got to subscribe star and find us there. <laughs> or Substack. Or Substack, yes. Oh, Subscribe Star would be better. Well, the Subscribe Star does have the class in it. So yes. that's where you want to go. <laughs> if you want the animal class. Substack has nice articles. Class. Yeah. yeah. Subscribe Star. And become a, a patron, patron of, of the light. The light. Yes. Alrighty. So the reason I was talking about that, besides letting it's everyone here who's listening know that if they want to communicate with animals and plants and Sasquatch, that the the class to do it is affordable and findable and you can do it. Anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. And using that skill just two days ago, 
you got communication, right? Go ahead and share that. Oh, yeah. So a couple of days ago. No, actually, it was more than a couple of days now. It's more like four or a five week? days. Yeah, it's more like a week. It's been a while. No, not that much of a while. It's been a very short while. Yeah. In a short while ago. Um, I was taking PB down the road. Where is she? Right in behind me. If you're watching the video, you see her in her normal spot. Yes. Which I have a crystal ball picture of her doing that. Yes. And um, we were walking down and then I felt this really strong experiential telepathy message from the Sasquatch. Telling us to go down the hill within our property... Uh, kind of next to it. It's actually, they consider that part of the land also our property. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because the owners pretty much told us to take care of it. So, um, To go down there. And I said, why? I said, there's something there. There's something there. And I thought, it's a present? No, it's not a present. Um, and then we carried on walking. And I had an image of either a deer or an elk getting killed. And or dying, right? And I thought, oh, that's odd. Um, very strange message, but I didn't link the two because I wasn't in that mode of let's communicate. I was just, you know, planning my day, walking Taking the doggy dog walkie, walk. yeah, all the things that you do normally in the day. And um, so came home and I told Larry, hey, Larry, we need to go down that way. I think it might be the next day. Yeah, you day. pointed over there yeah. the next day. You said, hey, Larry, the Sasquatch yeah. gave me a little message. We need to go over, that take over a there. peek down that way. Yeah. And I said, okay, and mm -hmm. then didn't do it. Right. And the day after that, I just grabbed you and we, yeah. we went down there. And as soon as we came out of like our driveway and into the woods, there was a sign there. A giant star. Yeah, a giant, beautiful, perfectly angled star made out of uh, sticks yep and it would be like really hard for well, nature it can to just fall it perfectly could. it's not outside the realm of possibility right but it was but... quite nice to mm -hmm. see it's kind of like see it's a it's sort of a here's a sign mm -hmm. you can take it or leave it but mm -hmm. tick, thank you yeah, for right you know there. coming out come yeah. on down and then there was another sign that pointed us down the yeah we down, went down the hill down, down the hill. To where yeah. it was flat and there was another structure there was a structure yes. built looked like a great place for like hanging out hanging out yeah right and right next to it was a trail yes so so we followed the trail followed the we trail. just felt that it was right you know when you get the right it kind of feels good when you get it wrong it kind of doesn't feel so good that's that a, type of energy yeah that's you know? what i was doing yeah Me and, and then uh, i had, had a meeting so i had to come back up and Larry carried on exploring, following the signs to the area that we had been told to go to. Right. And that trail led me to a spot mm -hmm. where there was the most impossible stick triangle stick. ever. The, the sticks were like 12 feet long. Oh, yes, that's they right. sticking yes, way yes, over yes, this yes. way, way over this way, way over this way. And yes, long yeah. sticks can fall in the forest and make a triangle. Don't get me wrong. They can. I know that. Mm -hmm. But there is a way that they fall that can't be from falling because any one of you lift, lifts a different one. That's when mm -hmm. they go over Reamed, one, under one, one, over one, under yeah. one, over one, under one. They yeah. can't fall that way. Right. I guess maybe if Weaved all together. three fell simultaneously straight up and down <laughs> and then weaved each other as they fell open to make a triangle. I mean, uh, I mm, I there's pretty much... You can't have all that happen at once. I don't once. think so. So it was a woven triangle, which is one of the things we found while we were expeditioning with Todd. Mm -hmm. was a woven triangle. We found multiples of those. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, if you think about it, finding multiple ones, more than one. The one we found with Todd was associated with a, a track. Oh, and yes, yes. a yes. message to go here. Yeah. And so it's like... If you walk through the forest, you're going to see triangles of wood all over the place, right? Right. But some of them are... But you're not going to find woven ones. No. Let me tell you. That's Go ahead true. and start looking. Yeah. So I found this woven triangle. And uh, the message with those triangles is there's a direction to go look. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what the training was on which direction. So the pointy end, I followed the pointy end to see where that goes. Okay. <laughs> and that, that went sh over here. I found it just went to a... Like Random elk, mm -hmm. elk had made a trail. trail through the woods. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of footprints and stuff. But I mean, that's nothing. So, okay, maybe there's an elk trail here. Mm -hmm. But there's a hundred elk trails here. Yes. 
So I went to back to it and checked the triangle and I followed the other end, the flat side. Kind of the, the open, open end. Well, that's what Todd told you to do anyways. Follow the he open end. He probably did, but you know how... He told you. I don't Follow pay, the open end. I pay only a little bit of attention sometimes. Mm. And I might have forgot. Anyway, yeah. I followed the open end. And it led me into the bushes, into nowhere. It was tangled up mess of brush. No trails, no nothing. And then finally I got to a spot where it was <laughs> blackberries. I'm mm. like, well, that's a dead end, isn't it? Yes. And then... Uh, I looked off to my right, and there was a cached deer. Can you explain to folk who don't live in the forest what a cached deer is? If you're a predator in the woods, mm -hmm. and you can't eat the whole thing mm -hmm. that you catch, mm -hmm. then you bury it under a little bit of shrubs and leaves and things like that, so mm -hmm. it's, you can't see it, really. All you see is this little mound of leaves. Mm -hmm. Well, this mound of leaves had an ear sticking out. Yes. And then uh, I could look at it and say, oh, that's a deer. <laughs> so there's a deer buried yes. under a tree mm -hmm. at the en end of nowhere in the mm -hmm. middle of our property. So uh, that made sense to me. It's like, okay, that's what I'm, that makes sense. That triangle's yeah. to go to here, go look here. Now the message I got wasn't, I was like, hmm, is this a present? Is this a present? And I got no. them, I got the, no, this isn't a present. I mean, if you want some, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it's not a present. A present would be on your porch. Right. But it is on your property, uh, land that you're responsible for, and so you should be aware. Right? Yes, be aware. Be aware that there's likely to be predators attracted to your this kill. Yes. So we had a couple options, and uh, the option we picked was we're going to put a camera and see what predator might come to this kill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's so scary going up in the woods to check the camera because yes. you got a I giant kill in the middle of the forest with tall brush everywhere. And, you know, any kind of alligator, crocodile, dragon. We don't know what's eating that. Well, there's no alligators or crocodiles here. Maybe or a dragon. Dragons. I don't yeah. know about dragons. Maybe dragons, yes, but... Definitely bears and cougars, for bears sure. Bears and cougars. And, and coyotes. Coyotes and yes. maybe um, uh, lynxes or... Lynxes? Yeah, the bobcat kind of thing. Oh, bobcats, yes. yes. There's probably other things that we maybe just don't know. Mm. Like... Some kind of little animals that eats. Little ones carrion. are okay, but you know. Birds, carrion birds. They're buzzards. okay. They're not going to come close to you. Yeah, I wasn't too afraid of those. But mm. the alligators, the dragons, and the whatever tigers. Yes. So it's a, it's a little bit process your fear before you run up there and check the camera. <laughs> which we did today. Yes. And, and uh, I had to go with him. He, sure, and the dog. And the dog. Yeah. Not that I was afraid. No, of course not, Danny. It's just prepared. He he wanted to make sure that I knew if he was eaten by a bear that he'd been eaten by a bear. <laughs> I didn't want there to be a mistake. In. It's like, <laughs> I wonder if maybe he went fishing. Yeah, maybe. That's probably what he did. Yeah. That's yeah. Right, yeah. Or maybe he went to town to go watch a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want there to be no misunderstandings. Yep, bear got me. Yeah. But no, no bear got me. As a matter no. of fact... We grabbed our uh, little camera thing, our little, it has a little a chip, in uh, chip in it, put it in our pocket, and we couldn't wait to go see what the heck we caught. And Mostly the, were photos of us setting up yeah, the camera. Yeah, there was 10 pictures of us in various Set, poses. Of, uh, setting up the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was one pose of you. Um, grabbing the camera. Grabbing the camera, and a pose of you walking away from the camera. Walking away from the camera, and yeah. you working, There's looking at the camera. pose of me looking, looking at, at the, the camera, camera. yeah. That was eight of them. Yes. And then we had three more to go. And there was an animal that came. To there that was an animal that came in the middle in of the, the middle of the between thing. us leaving, leaving the, camera the camera and, and picking, picking it, it up. up. That midday, right middle in the middle of, of the yeah. day, one of these yes. scary, scary monsters that came. showed up to eat this carrion. Yes, it was Missy. Missy, our dog. Our dog that you found the cash with, so she knew where it was. Yeah, she knew where it was, but I mean, it's a whole big deer. Yes. I didn't expect her to be running down there to sniff and eat it. <laughs> she did. Oh, we didn't get any photos of anything else. Just Missy. Just Missy. My goodness. Yep. Oh, well. <laughs> we we stocked the camera again. We did. We'll see if something Missy comes else shows back. up. <laughs> Probably Missy. So, and it was so funny because we drove there because our land is pretty big. Yeah. Um, and it's near... The road, the other, not the entry road, but the other road, the main road. 
So we drove there and then climbed up the mountain or the hill to get to the cached deer. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, it there was a bit was spooky. Missy. Well, it was a bit spooky because there was we hear some noises. something moving in the brush. Yeah. And it was Missy. And it was Missy. I was like, <laughs> what the heck? How did she get here? I know. And then she hid from us. She did because she, uh, she, knew. she knew that she'd been, she bad. <laughs> she'd been snooping into the cache. Yeah. She thought it was our deer, I think. She, Sorry, she had some bites. From us. She yeah. did hide from us. It was so funny. Okay, well, there might be more news later. And if there is, of course, we'll catch you up. But so far, yeah. something buried it. And Missy mm -hmm. chased it off and ate it herself. Yeah. yeah. And the Sasquatch led us there. Yeah, they told us to be aware. And you didn't tell me anything about dead deers or elks or anything. No, like actually, deer. I didn't. I All you to told tell me you. was that there was. A, yes, I totally forgot Sasquatch to tell him to about down here and because I didn't put the two and two together until yeah. what you told me you found. Right. And I'd, and then when you said, "Do you think it's that?" And I thought, "Oh my gosh, they totally showed me a deer getting killed." So yeah, that's it. And right. I tested out the is it a present, and I got a big no. And yeah. is it, um, you know, the why or whatever. And I got be aware, you know, like, look, be aware that this is in your land. You're responsible for the land and your animals in it. So be cautious and aware that this is here and it can attract bears and cougars and coyote and whatnot. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, I don't know if you've ever seen a deer that's covered up with brush. It's impossible to see. And leaves and I, needles you, and things. You took and me just right to it. Yeah, you and you pointed where it was, and I could not see it. I know, I showed people pictures of it. And they can't see it And in they the said, I'd, all I see is Missy. There's mm -hmm. nothing there. Yeah. And you were standing right there, and you can't see it. I couldn't see it. So the, the chances of me stumbling upon it are Random. zero is zero. No, Especially no, in our not possible. three or four thousand feet that way, and three or four thousand feet that mm. way. Ten, fifteen acres, practically twenty acres worth of spot. Yes. And it's all heavy forest. It is heavy forest. And it's steep hills. Yeah. So. Um, and it was under a bush. Under a tree. Tree, tree, tree. Yeah. Covered was, in brush yeah. and trees, covered in needles. Like three or four trees under it, like mm. hidden under there, under all the branches and leaves. So without without a sign pointing you, <laughs> you're not getting to find that. And that's exactly where we got, and sign that's exactly pointing. Yeah. So I thought that was a remarkable thing. Mm -hmm. So if you want those skills, use that class yep put yep. it into practice yeah i'm not promising you'll find a cached deer in your forest yeah. but and support ted's work todd, todd, todd sorry <laughs> ted. <laughs> todd's work <laughs> support todd's work right yeah. so go and get it and we we'll, we'll link the class um on his site so that for that goes to not his site but the one that the the, the package that we put together to support his work so that you can go and get the class there Yep. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so on to our normal scheduled program. We better be quick, though, because we've only got 10 minutes for that one. But it's important, honey. It's important. It's called Riding the Waves of Transformation. Mm-hmm, indeed. That's what it's called. It's spring in the Northern Hemisphere. Yes. And if you happen to live in the Southern Hemisphere, it's clearly autumn. <laughs> yes. So rather than read this article, which is rather long, and we've already spent most of our time talking about the communication with the Sasquatch, I want to really give like a summary about what this time of... Uh, Transformation. The, the time of year type of thing, if you look at it from a linear perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's the same energy that might manifest in different ways it's a time of transformation and um that basically like um spring and autumn we kind of culturally have been shown a little bit of it but very very kind of polarized on each of those transformational energies which is very divisive in my opinion and also not complete to me spring and autumn are magical times of transformation and you see it in nature and everything but it's also like if you pick up the complete package for the entire planet and use that energy yourself you can do amazing things 
But some of the things that we have been kind of led to believe is that everything starts, begins and whatever is in spring and you do spring cleaning and stuff like that and everything dies down and slows down and goes to sleep in winter or autumn. And then, you know, it's like one or the other kind of thing. But I found that if you, when I looked at those energies, I found that they actually merged together. They're one energy that has been divided to keep us divided and disempowered. And in the article, I show a little few things that you can do to tap into that transformational energy, right? The wave that's going around the planet right now. And use it in a very, very positive way, right? Because it's not just about cleaning. Right? Thank it's you. Not I, about, yeah. It's not just about um, pausing or going into... Putting you know, everything away. Putting everything away, getting your harvest and put it away, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's very, very, like, combined. And the, the also the main part of it, in my opinion, is I put three points. And the first one is by claiming the time of transformations for ourselves so that... Other people don't use that energy for themselves, our energy of transformation for themselves, right? And we're talking about the people who know how the, all these things work and want to manipulate our frequencies and energies on the planet. So claim this energy of transformation and a purpose, the purpose that you want to use this energy for. And um, Larry had this marvelous idea that we could use the energy uh, that we talked about before and several, several times before, actually, my, our prime purpose. So the energy that we would use is either our, if you are part of a group, when you're talking as a group, and my, if you're, when you're by yourself or we're talking um, as yourself, you, can, you should do both. So here it says, my prime purpose to be here on earth right now is to embody and express my true frequency and allow the environment to reflect it back to me in the form of experiences of that same frequency. So really state that intent and that focus when we're using these transformational energies that are on the planet. Okay? Yep. Claim it. Claim it. Claim it. Yay. Okay. Second step is cleansings clean your home your workspace your car your computer your relationships and your body this part is about releasing and here's the key this part is done in spring and autumn both huh? both very very important to do this part okay in both okay and the third part is restock renew revitalize reconnect and reestablish. And normally those would be the, the energies that were given for fall or autumn, right? It's like you harvest, you restock mm-hmm. your pantry, you renew your things or whatever, right? Revitalize your energies. But it's like the part of reconnect and reestablish, that's very, very important. It's kind of been forgotten. And this is really important both for spring and autumn. So after you do the cleansing and clear your energies and release what you don't need anymore, then you restock, renew, revitalize, reconnect and reestablish. Okay. Okay. All right. And then we go a little bit on about, you know, all the little details about what can be one or two and what it means and examples. But do you have any thoughts around that, honey? Well, I... I'm like a little uncomfortable. Oh no. Yeah. Because you don't like to release things. Because we changed things. Oh no, we changed things again. Yeah, on our podcast, we were like supposed to read our newsletter and comment on it as we go. Yes. And now we've just changed done it all it. which aways and overs, you know. Yeah, we did. So I suggest anyone who is listening go read the newsletter. Yes, go and, read it. Uh, you go get it by going to Substack, Substack yeah. and type in in Ilya Benz yep. on Substack, and you can read this, Riding the Waves of Transformation. Because mm-hmm. I do agree, it is a rather long one, mm-hmm. and it was fun to talk about the Sasquatch. It was. You know, but, yes, you know, I really so. like talking about our newsletter, too. That's good. So next time I'll talk about Sasquatch much faster. Okay. 
<laughs> well, I'm sure Ilya and Adelina in our second hour, they can bring up relevant points from the newsletter. So I'm thinking they're going to want to talk about the Sasquatch. <laughs> like we'll have to see, won't we? <laughs> we'll see. Oh, well, we'll the Sasquatch see. is so much fun, though. Come yeah, on. and the telepathy course yes. and the animal communication. Yes. I agree. It's much more uh, interesting than cleaning. <laughs> And restocking and revitalizing. Yeah, but uh, it is interesting that bit that you just took. Because yeah. usually we'll do one, but not the other. Exactly. And that's that's kind of how point. we've been trained. Do that's one, but not the other. Mm -hmm. Do the other, but not the one. Mm -hmm. So in each transformational period of time, we're only doing half the job. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. claim it. Claim, claim it and it. do it. And, uh, you know. And the third part, which I haven't seen really... It's the one you pointed out, having the intent, putting the intent to how you want to use this energy first. Mm -hmm. When we do cleansing, it's like mostly the intent is... Not um, dirty. <laughs> yeah, not dirty. <laughs> yeah. But, right? Yeah. But and this, when we restock and revitalize, our intent is to have more... Not starving. Not starving, yeah. But we don't infuse it, you know, we don't infuse it with infuse that Infuse it with energy. your prime purpose. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about it some more with Ilya and Adelina. We'll okay. we'll get into detail about the pod, about the the newsletter mm -hmm. and the bits in that. I'll make sure they don't spend too much time on Sasquatch. <laughs> okay. Good luck with that. Okay. <laughs> See you in a sec.